think we're good. Yeah. Christian, I got your doorway to your left. I got you, dude. Okay. Alright, I'm going to take apart my Daytona AK real quick and uh, this helps you install it, helps you install it, helps you disassemble your kit, whatever the case is. I will say I had my kit installed by Tony so I could have him basically thread the outer barrel to be a little shorter, a little stubbier. So I did not install this kit, but I recommend anybody that does not install their kit should at least take it apart to see how it works in case anything goes wrong with it or just general maintenance and all. The gun is actually really easy to take apart but it was the most annoying to get my hop dial this, the best in, co uh, in comparison to other Daytonas and I'll show you why that is. Um, so here we go. First part, take off the top cover. Pretty simplistic. Pushing the recoil spring in just like a real AK. Wiggle it off, might be a little tight. Um, step two, there's gonna be recoil assemblies right here. You're basically just gonna push this forward and just it's gonna kinda come out. Show you a quick little view. You can kind of see right here how it's some little guide rails there for it. Just pull forward, it's going to come out of those. Pull out, come up, recall spring is out. All right, so your kit's going to come with a nylon spacer. A lot of people on the forum put it behind the spring here. That is not where it's intended to go. Um, it's intended to go in the gas assembly, the gas tube itself. And basically, this is going to slide, the nylon spacer, if you're going to notice, is going to slide inside of here. That's just going to give this more rigidity. Um, this screw up here, I just put a red Loctite on it. I, I don't ever intend on taking this apart. But I think just take your spring off and maybe wipe it down. Just wipe it with a rag or something. Step two, we're going to remove the actual bolt assembly. Just slide your bolt back all the way as far as it'll go to the rear. And what you're going to do is, hopefully this can display it, you're just going to basically pull up, up on the assembly. Rotate it outwards and pull out. What you're rotating it for is to allow the air shaft and everything to get out of the, the actual feed tube and the hop-up. And then just kind of pull it up out of the gun. What's a snazzy little, maybe nice design, depends how you look at it, to actually separate the bolt tank from the bolt. On this kit, it's a little bit different than on most kits. Most you gotta actually remove this top screw here on the AK kit. Simply rotate it so you can see it like this. Oops. And slide it forward. And the bolt tank and the bolt are separated. This piece is also loose on your gun. You can unscrew this if you'd like. I put red Loctite in the threads and tightened it. I have no real reason to remove it. If someone has a reason, I guess just let me know in the comments. All right, next step. You're gonna have to remove the selector lever here. Um, with that being said, in case you don't know, down is safe, or down is, sorry, down is semi. Up there would be auto and above would ride, would ride safe. Most don't work on safe. It is what it is. So if we're on safe, if you look, the brass collared piece, the brass little piece there, that is your semi lever. So while you're on semi and you pull it, everything's gonna go. If you notice the height here, the height of this lever is slightly higher than the lever next to it, the full auto lever. As you go to full auto, they are now equal. So when you were to push this, if the valve was still sitting in there, this lever is going to be touching and the semi lever is not. So basically it'll continuously go. What's going on on semi is when you push, the semi lever is actually what's pushing the valve in. And when the bolt comes back across forward, it's going to push on this brass piece, push it down, which takes itself off of the valve and in return, no more gun, no more shooting. All right, so you're going to go from safe, or you're going to go all the way from, I keep saying that, you're going to go all the way from uh, semi all the way to the auto position. And as you're looking, watching this lever, see what it's doing there? You're basically not touching any of the levers. You may have to push down slightly on them and just slide, slide it out and then rotate it back to three o'clock. Boom. Hopefully that showed in the camera. If not, I'm trying to show some pictures. Then your lever is out. Uh, 
Um, next for me, I'm going to take off the pistol grip. Mine is a little different than some people's. I'm running a real steel Magpul MOE Plus grip, and I also put a grip connect on it. Uh, people have asked me on the forums, and I'm pretty sure to not show pictures of it, so I apologize. So here's your pictures. You're also going to have a screw just like this, regardless of the grip you have. This is what's actually going to hold the grip to the actual kit. It works just like how your other AK would kind of. You'll get a screw included. Unscrew that and ta-da, it's all loose. Now, I'll show you some small differences here. And I'll get to my grip connect in a second. So I, as you can see here, I kind of chewed out the front here, made this a little bit further down. If you go look online and look at a normal picture of an MOE grip, you'll see it kind of gets a little, goes a little higher. I chewed out the back here. And I say I chewed out, I took a Dremel and just a rotary file and went to town until it kept fitting. There's really not much that I had to do. And the front I had to pretty much clear I had to clear out just for to allow clearance for the trigger guard. In the back, I had to chew out to allow clearance for the screw and just just mating up here, nice and smoothly. There's no fight there now. I also decided to do a grip connect. Um, you can see it is very close. You can see how close my grip connect had to be to the hole that I drilled for the bolt. Um, I actually ended up having to round out, I've rounded the edges off on this screw here to allow clearance for the, or on that nut so the screw can go through. As you see, it's very close. I ended up having to also basically just turn that down a little bit on top, the actual around the head, just to allow clearance when sitting on the grip connect. So if you want to do a grip connect, it's a, it's a nice tight fit. All right, next step. There is a screw here on the bottom of the trigger guard going through where the mag releases into the kit. You, yeah, you can remove the screw just here if you wanted to. You can come right through here and just loosen it and the kit will come out. It's kind of a pain in the ass to, to fight it. Sometimes it doesn't want to come out. It's a very tight fit. So you can loosen it there if you'd like. It's up to you. Or there's going to be four screws. You, you can't miss them. Right here. There's going to be two on each side. There's one. And two. In case for some reason you can't see them, they are right there. There's two on each side of it. And all it's going to do is just give you some clearance just to get to the screw. These four screws here have never been Loctited, to be honest. Um, I didn't really mess with them when I got the kit from Tony. Thank you again for installing it. Um, they never came loose during break-in or ever. Uh, so I really haven't put Loctite on them. If you want to, go for it. Loctite's not going to hurt anybody. So that's free, and then you're gonna have a screw right there, which is actually holding the rest of the kit. It's gonna have a little bit of movement, but don't force that. That's you're gonna break some shit. You'd have to really force it. Now, I'd recommend taking a picture of this assembly in case it comes apart on you or whatever the case may happen. If not, I'm gonna show you here. A little kind of go close up so you can see what it looks like. But after that screws out, your kit's just gonna slide out. Here's what the kit assembled looks like. In case something just comes apart on yours or whatever the case may be. So there's that. All right, so really that's honestly, for the most part, that's like a pretty big teardown. The other thing would be the whole hop-up assembly. And I said earlier, out of the other Daytonas that I had, this was the most pain in the ass to get shooting well. And it wasn't the kit's like the actual functioning of the kit functioned just fine. Um, what it is, this is how the hop-up system works in it. I could get the hop real quick to work. I mean, I could CQB play no problem, but as far as shooting, let's say like 50 yards, it'd go out, maybe hook a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and it was more or less just me, my R hop being twisted, but it was fine in the hop-up unit. It was the way that the whole assembly gets put together, and maybe I'm just bitching to bitch. I, it's really not, I and mean, I still enjoy the gun. So, you have your hop-up chamber right here. Here's your hop-up screw, right? Just like a normal, what you're used to. And then you've got a screw right here, and I'm pretty sure you've got one on the bottom of it too, if memory serves, because I'm not taking this all apart. This screw and the one on the bottom are clamping it to this piece, which is essentially a big stainless piece that's threaded on the other end. So this end, it just kind of slides in your hop-up chamber, and this Allen screw and another one get clamped onto it. On the other end of this steel piece that's coming through here through the trunnion, 
It's got threads on it. The threads are from the outer barrel. They're going to thread into this piece. Once that's there, this trunnion piece that gets kind of just pressed in there is going to screw in via this piece, and it's going to screw and secure its, you know, screw, just basically screw, ugh, secure this piece from rotating anywhere. So what I did first was I assembled, I screwed the outer barrel, I screwed the outer barrel onto that stainless piece. I then put my hop-up chamber in here and I tightened it to it basically. And it's gonna just kind of wiggle around because it's free on this trunnion piece. This screw is not securing everything as a whole. So let this just kind of free float, let it do its thing. Put the feed tube in here now and basically secure a mag in and kind of get it so it's aligned. Once it's aligned, tighten the shit out of that screw, preferably red lock type, and let it just cure. So my issue mainly was just allowing the hop-up chamber to be ever so slightly rotated. And it wasn't a huge ordeal, but again, it was just harder than the other kits, just being that it was like a three-piece assembly. Um, again, the nylon spacer is gonna go in the gas tube up through here. It's gonna ride in the gas tube, it's just gonna sit in there, and that's what for the recoil spring. I'm not gonna take this front apart. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's got some set screws and just some pins. When you go to remove the outer barrel of your LCT, it requires a lot of heat. As everyone has said on the forums, it requires a lot of heat, probably a vice. Again, thank you, Tony. I didn't have to do that. He did that for me. But it's going to unscrew. It is threaded in there. Heat, it's locked in, okay? Can't stress this en I can't stress that enough. Besides that, that's pretty much it. This, this screw right here, motherfucker. I put a red lock on this thing, I don't know, two or three times. It always worked its way loose. It hasn't in a while now. Other than that, just unscrew that, and this buffer assembly comes off. Other than that, that's really it for the kit. I mean, while it's apart, I'm going to re-lube mine. Just, I kind of wiped it dry earlier, but I'm going to lube it and just put it back the way I would. Other than that, hopefully that helps. Uh, some people had to grind a little bit in this back here just to get everything to fit. Um, and I say that because some people have problems with this kit with the actual trigger box fitting. So first, I'll put the trigger box in there. Your trigger box should have no issues. This top piece here should be flush, basically, with the receiver body. Mine sticks up, I mean, just, just a little... Just a hair, nothing to go crazy about. Um, so once the trigger box is in there, put your screw back. Now I'd recommend some blue Loctite. I just ran out of my, uh, if you've watched another video of mine, I actually prefer the, oh, it's a kind of a gel, whatever it is, a paste. I just ran out of that. So we're going to liquid again. Liquid works just fine, just like the paste, preferably. You don't need a lot. So in case you couldn't see it the first time, here's where the screw hole is going to be. They'll kind of secure the, there you go. So now the kit's kind of secured there. The lock try to dry a little bit over time. Next piece, we're gonna put the trigger guard on. You've got these four screws. I've never put blue Loctite on them. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to again today. If you want to, go for it. It is what it is. I haven't lost any yet. So woo, I say that now, I'm gonna lose them next time I go out to the field. I'm gonna get jinxed. All right, a little fast forward there. A little faster that way. All right, next. I don't ever take this fully apart uh, unless like I got an issue or whatever, I need to check on the crush run or something like that. But I do real quick when I'm just maintaining it. I just kind of push it down and just put my finger on the front of the nozzle. Get a little push. You know, kind of see that it has some springiness to it. So I know the, the spring behind the actual collar there is good. Uh, all right. Does not take much, I'd get some at least. Once this gun has been broken in, to be honest, all these guns, they all have a real nice smooth coat on it. So I I don't put much anymore at all. I feel like I'm getting less and less on the lube. Just get a little squirt, a little drop, sure. Put a little there, one drop there. I guess it depends on your use. I will be honest, most of my play is on semi-auto. So I don't even, I do have lube in my bag when I go out to the field, but 
don't really ever use it to be honest. Uh, so that's there. So to reinsert this, if I can hold this straight here. Basically take this, take the bolt tank, slide it onto the bolt this way, pull all the way to the back. This collar is going to get stuck on there. Rotate 180, push forward, she's good to go. If anything, if you want to kind of spread the lube a little bit, just kind of like so. There we go, that's ready to go. I will put a little drop, some lube back there. Just kind of run that through there, just kind of get those O-rings good to go again. All right, so before you put that back in though, you got to put the semi-lever in. So it's kind of pretty much how we took it out, just reversed. If you look, you can see how it's kind of cut. These little indents down here will kind of actuate the semi-auto and full auto, or will kind of mess with the levers. So you are going to take it like so at three o'clock, go in the hole. You might be running into some levers. You're like, oh no, I can't get it in. Push both levers down. Try to do this in a weird manner so you can see. Push the, whoop. come on, get a little stuck there. Rotate it to 12, push the lever down if you can, push through it. It's gonna line up in the hole there. See how it kind of fell into place? Then you should be able to just rotate it, and as you look, you can kind of see how the arm is gonna actuate each one of the levers, how it kind of pushes on them. If you wanna do a quick ops check of it. Kind of look at the lever, you see this full auto lever's down. Push it up, full auto lever's up. We'll do another ops check afterwards. So we'll leave it like that. Next step, take the bolt tank and the bolt. I'm going to put it through the valve like so. And I'm going to basically slide the air line in just, I mean, just enough. Bend this forward like so, and they'll kind of just slide in together. You have to rotate the bolt assembly again, and you'll be able to watch the actual air shaft. It's going to clear that little cut out there in the assembly, of the chamber, and the valve is going to have a little. It's going to have a little groove that it's going to slide into, right there. Everything's going to be money. just kind of pushed down. It's there. Bolt assembly forward. Recoil spring. Push forward, basically the same as before, let it lock in there. If you want to do a quick ops check of it again now, the semi-auto, you could do it again. Just do the same thing, just look for the levers. Next up is going to be the grip. Put the grip on. Um, you don't have to do this. I do it with any of my grip connects. I kind of stick just something through the, through the line. And all I'm doing that for is, you may notice on sometimes your grip connects, the line may, as you're trying to push down on it, there's no tech T or any lube on it. It'll kind of just collapse the airline. You're like, oh man, I can't get insert this. I kind of just stick a, a any tool in it. It's gonna go technically this around here. I do it and I just kind of insert that into the airline. And all I do that for is it kind of keeps something a little rigid inside of there to kind of help guide it. You don't have to do it if your airline doesn't experience the issue I just described to you. Not all of mine do. Uh, this one actually doesn't, but I still just do it out of habit, force habit. I just push down with that. And boom, I know the airline slid up. This didn't, you know, move where it was. And now I'm going to screw my screw in. This little screw back here, I don't think I mentioned on the bolt tank. Most mine I can put blue Loctite on, okay? This this fucking thing right here on this gun, that requires red, in my personal opinion. That thing has come loose. Never enough, because I actually, you know, care for the guns and I do maintenance, I just do a quick check of them. That thing has definitely worked itself loose. Numerous occasions, it has not worked itself loose now that I put red Loctite on it. And with this kind of, a, this style of this kit, there's really no need to remove that screw. Um, on some, like I said, you have to remove that screw to actually 
take it outside of the bolt. Um, next, a little groove there. Self-explanatory, this kind of goes in the front. You notice it's kind of back. Oh no, I can't put it on. Just kind of pull the assembly a little bit forward. It'll kind of just sort of chill. Put it there, line it up, and just kind of... Hey now, not like that. Don't do that. That'll... There you go. Sometimes it doesn't always come out, so I just kind of give it a quick rack, and there she is. Well, that's all there really is to this gun. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, put it in the comments below. Or just make some comments on the Tona page. Just try to do a little search first if you can. Uh, other than that, uh, have a good one, guys.